Hello, welcome to Yes, Worst to Best. Today we are going to be talking about the uh, 70s progressive rock legends, um, 70s prog legends from the UK, Yes. Um, and one of my all-time favorites. Um, they released a lot of albums that I consider to be in my top 100 favorite albums of all time, such as Close to the Edge, Going for the One, etc. Um, they happen to be... Ooh. <laughs> um, I, I love their music a lot. They are one of the things that influence me, and um, I love what they do. They are a great band, and um, well, we're going to talk about them now. Um, so what can I actually say? Oh, well, one thing. I'm very, I'm being festive today and I'm wearing my Yes t-shirt, so, haha, I got you now. Anyways, um, so I have, I know that, um, they have 20 albums, sort of, I mean, really 19, but I'm counting a lot of the stuff that people maybe won't count as Yes albums. But I do. I'm going. I included the symphonic music of Yes album by Yes and the London Philharmonic. I also included um, from a page their new um, mini album that came out. I'm including Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and How, and I'm also including uh, the Key Studio. Um, so those are albums that people don't really consider Yes albums per se. But I am including them here. I was thinking about and um, adding Anderson. I mean Anderson Stolt, but I was just like, nah, it's only Anderson on that album, so might as well not. I mean Tom Breslin was on that album too, but I mean, what's the point? Um, so we're going to get right into it, starting with number twenty-three, and um, this is usually at the very bottom of everyone's list. So let's hit it, number twenty-three. Open Your Eyes, released in 1997. Yeah, um, there was no guess as to this was their worst. I mean, I don't, I don't, I mean, it's just not, it's not my cup of tea. I don't like it, never have. Just not a lot of great songs on this album. I do like the, the title track of Open Your Eyes. That's a good one. But, but that's the real, that's the only real song on that album that I actually enjoy but for the most part it's just not good not my thing it's them trying to rehash the past and then from the 70s and also mid 80s but it doesn't work very well here but it's it i don't like it i just don't like it not my thing and unfortunately i don't think i'll ever like it so i really did try and listen to it did not get into it it's just not my thing. Anyways, number 22. Symphonic Music of Yes, released in 1993. Okay, so the first album that people don't really consider a Yes album, but I put it in here anyway, because let's face it, John Anderson and Steve Howe are on this. And it was arranged by Alan Parsons, so I mean, <laughs> and, oh, and it was a uh, it was uh, arranged by uh, David. Um, I can't remember his name. Well, her name now, D. Palmer. So that's cool. Um, um, I know that these are just cover versions of uh, Yes material. It's not bad. It just doesn't live up to what I. It just doesn't live up to uh, the. The stuff that they do on regular albums. So, I am I am going to I am cl including this sheerly merely for the fact that it it is a Yes album and it does have the Yes name in it. So, I'm gonna put it in here anyway. So number twenty one. Yes, released in nineteen sixty nine. Yeah. Um very low and i know a lot of people will probably rip my throat out for this but it's it is a good album it's it's good but you know i mean it, it's very amateurish it it's it's you know it has its problems uh, you know i mean like every album this one has its problems 
Um, I think that this is, um, it's not very, it's there from Genesis to Revelations. It's that kind of thing. I mean, it's them trying to, it's their sound in, in some ways, but it's also not in others. It's, I think it's closer to resembling the Beatles and a little bit of the Beach Boys with a little bit of the Rolling Stones with that classic yes sound a little. It's not bad, but it's certainly not something that I'm into very much. And that just happens to be me. So, number 20. <laughs> Tormato, released in 1978. Yeah, I mean... This is not as bad as everyone says, but it, I'm, I was never into this album. It's not bad, but I just, I wasn't a fan of this when I uh, listened to it. It was, it had some good moments, but overall I was just kind of like, I was, I was like, okay, not bad. I mean, there are some pretty good songs on this album, like Don't Kill the Whale, but most of it I was just like, eh. it sounds like classic, yes, but... I don't feel it on this album, it just doesn't work for me. So, number 19. Heaven and Earth, released in 2014. Yeah, so this is an album that grew on me a little, but it only grew on me a tiny bit. It, it, it has a couple of good songs, Many more than uh, Tormato does, unfortunately. But, I mean, it it just sucks that they they made this album in 2014 after years and years of experience of making albums. And um, I think that the big thing about this is that it almost, it almost sounds like Glass Hammer, actually. I mean, this album almost sounds like Glass Hammer, mainly because of um, uh, John Davison's voice. Which, I like John Davison, pretty good singer. But, you know, um, there are some songs that work on this album and some that, some that don't. I mean, I wasn't too big of a fan of this, but it grew on me a little. And it's um, a fairly consistent, yes-sounding record. So, I gotta give it some praise for that. And it at least works in places and it doesn't work in others. So, number 18. Magnification released in 2001. Alright, so the Symphonic Yes album, which, um, it's, it's one of those albums by Yes that are, you know, they, Yes fans either love this album or they hate it. I'm one of those people who are kind of in the middle. I like a lot of the material on this. But there are some songs that I'm just not a fan of, like Time is Time. I wasn't a fan of that song. It's not bad, but it's not great either. Um, oh, man, there there are really good songs on this album. Let me see if I can uh, pull up a few here, because um, I, I do have, happen to have it. I do like um, uh, my, the title track, Don't Go, Give Love Each Day, uh, uh, Dream Time, uh, In the Presence of... Those are all good, and I do like the live footage on this album. With like uh, the Close to the Edge uh, symphonic version, and uh, the it's uh, the uh, oh god here, god damn it, um, uh, the Relayer Gates of Delirium uh, 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 version that they do on that. So overall, pretty good, but it I would rather listen to number seventeen. The latter released in 1999. So this is one of those albums that I think is overhated, and I don't understand exactly why. There are a lot of songs on this album, such as Homeworld, that are very classic sounding. That it's very classic sounding, yes. And Igor Karlovchev is a very good keyboard player. Very good. He can he can play, and uh, he shows his work on this album very well. It's very well done. I don't know what happened there, but <laughs> um, I think that this one, along with the, the next one, is they're, they're, they're two most overhated albums that I don't understand. So, number 16. Union, released in 2004. 
released in 1991. Yeah, I know. So, the Trevor Robin era, yes, uh, uh, combined with Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe. So, and with a lot of other musicians on this album. This is a huge album to digest. And it is a bit of a, it's a little bit on the poppier side with that Anderson, Bruford, Wickman, and Howe signature sound that they did on Anderson, Bruford, Wickman, Howe. And it's, um, it's good. There are a lot of good songs on this album. Like, I would, I would, I would have waited forever. I love that. That, that's a good song. I really love that one. That one's an underrated gem. And Union has its moments like the latter where either, either sounds, like classic yes or it sounds like 80s yes i mean you know it's a good it's a good album that has a mix mash of all the stuff found on uh you know on uh you know um stuff like uh 90125 and big generator and stuff found on you know stuff like drama and um going for the one so number 15 Big Generator, released in 1987. Yeah, okay. This one I actually quite enjoy a lot. Um, a lot of people hate on this one a lot, too. This one's another... Well, there. I guess that means there are three albums in a row that people love to hate on for no reason. Um, this one is much more on the soft rock side, for sure. Much more. But it's, it's good. It has its moments where you're just sitting there like, Wow! That was good. Like uh, the song "Running," that one. That one's great. I like the title track. I like. Um, hold on, I gotta make sure because I have the album on my. I have all of their albums because I'm a huge. I'm a fanatic for this band. Yeah, Big Generator's good. Rhythm of Love, really good. Shoot high, aim low, great song. Uh, Love will find a way. Finalize. I'm not a huge fan of a Holy Lamb, but still really good song. Um, I'm not a fan of that song in the sense of that the other songs are good. It just happens to be my the weakest song on that album, but I still like it. Um, that was a mixed mash of things, but either way, Big Generator, pretty good. like it. I'm not a fan of the album cover, though. Holy crap, that's bad. Um, but let's get into number 14. Tell me what you would say when things are... From a page released in 2019. Yeah, um, I'm actually a pretty big fan of this, and I am a huge fan of Oliver Wakeman's work. I I love what he does. Oliver Wakeman is a good songwriter. He plays like his father, and he's very very talented in what he does. Um, From a page was that kind of. Um, I think they were actually outtakes from uh, the Fly From Here uh, recordings that were never used. And then they were re-recorded and up and then uh, released. And of course, um, very underrated as well. But then again, I mean, it's a new it's a, it's a new release. So, I mean, I can't really blame people for um, not giving it a chance as of yet. It's it's really good. It's it's a little bit more on the Alan Parsons side of Prague, but still really good. It's soft. It's melodic. It's 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 a solid record. So number thirteen. Time and a word released in nineteen seventy. Oh, this is where the yes sound finally starts to happen. I I was a fan of this when I first listened to it. It was very... It still had that kind of um, debut sound, but it was starting to sound a little bit more formulated. It was it was starting to become the yes that we know and love now. It's it's that kind of thing, and it's it's not quite there yet. It's it's their trespass in a way. Mm, no, the yes album is the yes album is their trespass, but. Still, Time and a Word is really good. It's it's a strong release, and it has a lot of songs that I really love by the band. I mean, let me let me see here. I have the all I have all these albums here. I mean, I love I love them. I love Every Days. I love Sweet Dreams, The Prophet. Um, I like Clear Days, Astral Travelers, fantastic. The title track is good. Uh, Dear Father, uh, no, no opportunity. No opportunity necessary. 
All of those are great. All of those are really great songs. Great album. Love it. Um, so, number 12. Anderson, Bruford, Wakeman, and Howe, released in 1989. Another album that people don't consider yes, but I do, and I put it in this list just because it is basically yes. It's basically yes, but without Chris Squire. Um, and it's 80s prog. It's 80s prog to the max, but... It's 80s prog in the way that they were trying to rehash the past, and it works on this album. It works extremely well to their advantage. Really good stuff. Um, I mean, there are a lot of songs that I really love off this release because it it's just an album that really works. I could listen to pretty much every song on this album. Themes, Fist of Fire, Brother of Mine, Birthright, The Meeting, Quartet, uh, Teak Boys... <laughs> Um, Order of the Universe, let's pretend. Everything there, everything there is great. I love it. It's a great record. Um, and another underrated gem, the, uh, canon discography, of course. Because that's one that I think was, uh, it's a, it's a canon album for sure. And I think it's good. So, this is where things get a little bit weird, because I know that people will rate this next one a lot lower but I happen to really love this next one. So number 11. Can you give me a love? Talk, released in 1994. Yeah, I know. Talk is up here, and it's way up. And it's one that I have noticed that people... It's another one that... It's it's very much like real, uh, uh, magnification. People either love this album or they hate it. And I love it. I mean, and the endless dream suite. Love that. Love that entire thing. It's very Yes Meets Van Halen kind of album. And I was a huge fan of it when, once I heard it. And it, it just clicked. It was a Yes album that really, really clicked with me. And I love it. It's it's very underrated. I, and I it, it just barely got... It almost got into the top ten. I was... I was almost thinking of putting in it as number 10, but I couldn't because I have to give credit to number 10. So, speaking of, let's go right into number 10. The Yes album, released in 1971. Okay, so this is definitely their trespass. However, I love... I mean, there are so many good songs on this album, too, but it is definitely... A more amateurish release. Yours is no disgrace. Clap. Um, Starship Trooper. I've seen all good people is a good song. Uh, Adventure. Uh, Perpetual Change is an underrated gem in the entire Yes discography. Even though uh, the Yes album is definitely on the higher end of average on this um, from the band, I just think that overall, it's uh, in it. It suffers from being a little amateurish. And it is definitely the signature sound that ended up, it w that was the album that um, that defined them. It, that was their first album in which people said, yeah, this is what Yes sounded like for about another uh, seven years. And, of course, people love it. And I, I enjoy it quite a bit. It's just, you know... I I'm missing something in there. I'm I'm missing something out of this album that I I love in others. And you know, it just happens to be that I was not a huge fan of this. And I hate to be that person, but I do have my unpopular opinions with Yes, even though they are my one of my favorite bands of all time. Such a great album, but unfortunately it it does lack the yes oomph that I love from the rest of these albums on my top 10. Still good, but for sure I like the next the next 9 more. So number 9. 90125 released in 1983. Nah, nah, nah. I know what you guys are going to do. 
you guys are going to rip me apart for putting 90125 over the Yes album. And yes, I did put 90125 over the, over the Yes album because let's face it, it's a good album and it has a lot of prog stuff on it. I mean, can you really tell me that there is no prog on it? I mean, I'm a, I am like Owner Over Lonely Heart. I like that song. Hold On is a great song. It Can Happen. Um, Changes, that's and that's a prog song. Same with Cinema. Um, Leave It, Our Song, City of Love is Good, and Hearts. I mean, this is mostly, and the, most of this album is prog. And, and it's a strong release. It's underrated, and I don't understand why people hate it so much. Another one that is overhated in the Yes discography, for sure. But there's another one that people hate on a lot more, and... 90125 is a yes album that at least some people have um, their respects for, but this next one is a lot more hated in, in uh, the yes fan, fan base, so number eight. I want to be the one who always. Fly From Here, released in 2011. Yeah, I put Fly From Here way up. Way, way, way up. Why? Because. It's fantastic. It's a great release by Yes. And a lot of people don't know that Fly From Here was actually written during drama, which is a great record. I don't, I mean, Fly From Here, drama, both great. And they were written around the same time, too. I mean, like, goddamn. I mean, the you, uh, Fly From Here, there is actual footage. Uh, not video footage, but audio footage of uh, Yes performing Fly From Here in 1980. And with Trevor Horn, and of course, it sounds good. Only the thing the thing is, is that it's about 9 minutes long instead of the extended 20 minute long suite that they made for the album. But I actually prefer the Fly From Here suite on the album rather than the live footage, but still really good. It works, and it's underrated as well. Same with this next one, overhated as well, number seven. Drama, released in 1980. Yep, okay, so I put the two sister albums um, right beside each other. Okay. Machine Messiah, I mean, Into the Lens, Tempest Fugit. I mean, can you really get more go fantastic yes than that stuff i mean that's classic sounding yes and that is beyond classic sounding yes and just because it has trevor horn and jeff downs of the buggles doesn't it doesn't make it a bad record and a lot of people overhate this album as well this one's one album that people love to hate on even though i don't understand why it's a great record extremely well done and trevor horn's a really good singer Shoot me if you must, <laughs> because I really do love this record. Really good. Underrated and overhated. Let's uh, get to number six. Fragile, released in 1972. Yeah, I put Fragile a little bit lower on this list. Why? Mainly because of the fact that it feels more like a collection of songs than a unified album. I do love I do love all the songs on this record. It is a very substantial album, but it doesn't flow like one. And of course, there was a lot of conflict in the band at this time. I mean, the meaning of the of the name Fragile literally means that the band was fragile at that time. I mean, it was this this and Close to the Edge, both of them are basically saying that the band was close to the edge. They were a fragile band, and they were basically close to breaking up at that point. That is what the titles mean. And I, the only reason why I know that is because of the fact that it was stated in an interview by, I think, one, two of five band members. I think Chris Squire and Steve Howe said that. But either way, it's still good, but it feels more like... It's... You know, you know what I, the first album I can compare it to, not in terms of songwriting at all, more in the sense of like album format. 
it's their works volume two. It's their works volume two. It's good material, but no one's on the same page on this album whatsoever. Even though I love Heart of the Sunrise and South Side of the Sky, great songs, under those are two underrated gems in the Yes discography as well. More underrated gems. <laughs> but either way, uh, Fragile is Their Works Volume 2. So number five. <laughs> Key Studio released in 2001. Yep, okay. Here we go. Bring on the hate. Bring it on. Hate me if you must. But I actually think that uh, Key Studio is actually really underrated material by the band. It It's back to sounding like close to the edge era, yes. With that 90s feel. And it works. It's a... Uh, it's a it's a behemoth of a of a record. Even though it is a compilation album of just the key, it's to Ascension studio work on one album. I like the way that they tracked it out, and the track the track listing that I that is on the Key Studio compilation disc works really well, and it flows in as an actual album. And I don't know why they didn't just release it as an album. It would have been a good idea. It would have been a really good idea. I love Mind Drive. I love that that is. Um, and everything on this record, just, I love it. It, it's, it's very underrated stuff as well. A lot of the stuff that I find is really good. A lot of people find it to be either mediocre or not very good, but I love Key Studio. Um, number four. Tales from Topographic Oceans, released in 1973. Yeah, I know a lot of people would shoot me for this because this is the one album in the 70s discography from Yes that most people hate. Most people hate this record. And I don't understand why. Well, I, well, I, I do understand why. It is a very hard to digest album and it is very demanding of the listener however i i really like it i don't mind listening to an hour and 20 minutes of music it's really good and if i'm not mistaken i think that there are two songs on this album i think it was ritual and um oh god <laughs> What's the first track? I can't remember the name of it. For God. The revealing, revealing the Science of God. Sorry. I think that those two were actually written during Close to the Edge sessions, but they were never put brought on to Close to the Edge. Thank God. <laughs> but still, really good material, and it sounds like Close to the Edge in, so, in, in some ways. It's a really, really good record. I am a fan of it, and it works for me. It has a lot of those really experimental parts, and it has those jazz fusion -y kind of parts. And it was the introduction of Alan White into the band. So, I mean, I do like Alan White, and his work on this album and the next one are really good. Actually, the next three. Uh, the next two, sorry. Um, so, number three. <laughs> Relayer, released in 1974. Yeah, the, this is usually uh, um, everyone's number two, and I like it. It's got, it, it's really, it's a bulky album. It is basically the twin album to Close to the Edge, but more jazz fusion and a little bit more experimental. I do like this, most of the work that Steve Howe does on this album. And the Stephen Wilson remix that I have just, oh my god, it makes the original master sound pretty bad. But then again, I mean, it was the 70s. They couldn't control how the quality of the masters back then. But the Relayer is usually everyone's number two, but my number two is actually this one. Going for the One, released in 1977. Yes, I know. Everyone start throwing hands and slap me in the face. Because, you know what? The 70s 
yes albums have a lot of albums that are either loved or are mixed grab bags. People either love them or don't. And Tales is one of them, same with Going for the One. Uh, uh, Tormato, kind of, but not in the same way. Um, that one's more people just... It's more of people who don't like it than really like it. So, Going for the One is uh, another Tales. Um, I actually really love the material found on Going for the One. It was my favorite Yes album for a while. And then I was just like... <clears throat> this is the yes material that I love. Parallels, the title track. I love. I do like the title track quite a bit. Um, Awaken. Seriously, Awaken. That is a top three yes song of all time. You cannot sit there and tell me that Awaken is a bad track. That's a great track. Turn of the Century and uh, Wondrous Stories are also fantastic. Love going for the one. Great record. Again, very underrated as well. And probably... My second favorite, but you know, my favorite has to be number has to be. It, it's pretty obvious. Let's be honest. Number one. Close to the Edge, released in 1972. Okay, everyone saw this coming because let's be honest, it's everyone's favorite. Yes, album. Well, not everyone's, but you know what I mean. It's it's it. Everyone loves this album. It's number one on Prog Archives, and it's 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 been not one of the highest rated prog albums of all time for ten to fifteen years now, maybe even as long as it's been released. I mean, seriously, Close to the Edge is a masterpiece from beginning to end. It's my third favorite album of all time, and there's not a single weak moment on this album. Man. The entirety of, of the title track, Siberian Contru, and you and I love it. It's an emotional roller coaster from beginning to end, as with most of the stuff in my top ten, actually. But anyways, um, I'm going to sign off right here. Thank you guys so much for watching this, if you enjoyed it. And please, leave your own list in the comments below. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always... Peace.